I'm going to show you all an amazing trick to remove extreme acne from your photo using Photoshop's Generative Fill AI feature. Now, the first thing that we need to do is go ahead and get ourselves the lasso tool. We just want to simply locate and select the area that we want it to apply the changes. And in this case, we just want to go all the way around. Go onto the generative fill and then type in remove acne. Go ahead and click on generate. We can then minimize this. Once it's finished, you can see that we now have three different variations of some decent results. I would say the first one in this case is the best one compared to the other ones because the other ones makes the person look older with the wrinkles and some of these lines right here. And what we can do now is we can move on to the actual manual editing because as you can see, everything looks great so far up until you zoom in and you can see that the two different skins do not match with each other. For one, the original skin is a lot more textured. It's got grain and it has a lot more detail. This one is also blurry and that is what we don't want it to do. Now, in this case, what we're going to do is, first of all, we are going to sharpen this area so we can match it to the original skin. All we need to do in order to actually match it and to sharpen it up is to go ahead and get yourself both of your layers selected. And we're going to press Control or Command and J. We're going to minimize the original two. And with the top one, we're just going to combine these two together. Right click on here and convert to a smart object. From here, we're going to once again, press Ctrl and J, and with the new layer, we're going to rasterize this layer because we are going to use this one to sharpen this image. Now, the next thing to do from here is to select yourself the image or the thumbnail for the layer, and then press Ctrl or Command and I. This will invert the layer, and then we also want to set this layer to a vivid light effect. From here, we're going to work backwards and we're going to go up to filter, go down to blur and get yourself a Gaussian blur. Now this is going to sound really weird because we're actually using blur to sharpen this image. And if you notice, once you apply the Gaussian blur, you now have the option to sharpen this layer right here. So we're just going to set to two, four and go ahead and press OK. And then the next thing from here is to get yourself another copy of your image. And then you want to hold shift, left click on the top one, and you want to group these together. With this group, we're going to set it to overlay. And as you can see, we now have this really sharpened image compared to before and after. And you can see it's starting to bring out some of the detail from the actual skin area that we've just been working on. However, at the moment, it's applied it to all the image. And what we need to do is just simply hold Alt and then left click on here and drag this up to the group one. And this will copy the mask onto the group and it will only affect this area right here. So already, as you can see, it's nicely sharpened it up and it makes it look more natural. However, another problem that we have is that the original image also has a lot of grain and detail right here. You can see they are very small pixels and so much detail on the original image. Now, what we can do is we can do a similar thing with this by applying a new layer above this one. And with this new layer, we're going to go to edit and go down to fill. We want to set the contents to 50% gray, normal for the mode, and then 100% for the opacity. Go ahead and press OK. And once you've got yourself this new layer, we're just going to, first of all, right click on here, convert this into a smart object, and then you want to set this one to a overlay. Once you've done that, we can go up to filter, and then go down to camera raw filter. In here, we're just going to go all the way to the bottom and you want to open up the effects. For the grain, we're going to set this one to 80 
And for the size, we're going to put this all the way down to zero. Because like I said before, the detail on the original image is pixel by pixel. And that is what we want to generate. We can then set the roughness to 70, just to make it more harsher and more visible. And then we can go ahead and press OK. Now straight away, this is going to apply to all of your image, as you can see. And we're going to once again, hold Alt, left click on the mask and drag this up to the layer one to only apply it on this area right here. Now at the moment, it is really harsh. And what we can do is we can simply lower the opacity down to a much lower number. A cool shortcut for this is if you press four on your keyboard, this will lower it automatically down to 40%. We can also lower it down to 35 and that seems like a good number to work with. And already you can start to see it is starting to blend in a lot more compared to the original. It's bringing back the detail and it's matching it with the original image. If you wanted to, you can also change the mask by holding Alt, left click on the mask layer. And if you wanted this to be softer on the edges, you can simply open up the properties and you can increase the feather to something much larger. And this will soften the edges, making it blend even better compared to before. And then the final thing that we can do to finish this off is left click on the top one. You want to hold shift and then left click on the bottom one and you want to group these together. We're going to press control or command then J and we're going to hide the group two as a backup and we're going to right click on this one and convert to a smart object. We can also right click on here and go to rasterize layer. The final changes that we are going to apply is to blend these edges even more. And a cool little shortcut for this is to just simply use the remove tool right here. Highlight the edges and go all the way around and this will just blend it in a lot better. Some areas may not look as good and you may need to do this to a smaller portion rather than the whole area. We can also fix this area right here as well. And then blend this one right here. We're also going to do the neck area as well. Just to blend it in and make it look more natural. And that's pretty much it. That is a cool shortcut and way that you can use and like I said, you can keep on using the remove tool to fix any areas if you had multiple shadows or you think that the jawline or certain areas didn't look natural. You can just correct it from here with the remove tool. Now, before I go, you may also like this next video up on the screen showing you all how to expand any textures in Photoshop.